<laughs> morning. It's an early one. It's about six in the morning. Just gone six. Down here at my uh, local uh, beach. Not even beach, but local bit of uh, sea. And I'm heading to my favourite rock pools. There's two round here that I love fishing in. Um, I've not done any rock pool fishing yet this year, but yesterday I was out doing a bit of foraging um, and I was finding butterfish. Um, <clears throat> I know they're here all year round. I was looking at my uh, my timeline last night in work um, and I was catching them in February last year. So I'm going to go and try and get one. I've got some tiny, tiny rigs, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, some ragworm, a couple of bits of fish bait. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I can get a couple of mini species. I'm after a butterfish. Um, like I said, they, there's a lot of them about, um, but they're quite hard to catch on rod and line. Or I've found them quite hard to catch, um, but not impossible. So if I got one today, I'd be buzzing. Uh, but yeah, a lot of you will probably recognise where I am. Um, I'll even show you where the rock pools are. Uh, one of them is big enough to swim in. Um, it's absolutely stunning. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll bring you back when I'm set up. This little thing. I'm gonna get you out of the sun. The sun's that way. Tiny. Lenny, I think that is a goby, tiny little goby, little mini thing, back under the stone. So because I've not got a net with me, I'm not going into the actual rock pools because as soon as you lift a rock, whatever's in there is going to swim into it. So I'm looking for the rocks that have got a little bit of water around them, but aren't um, as part of an actual rock pool. Um, I've only been out in five or so minutes. Um, plenty of little gobies. Um, loads of crabs. But yeah, just want to see what's about. Might be a couple of little lobsters. Um, I've never found any lobsters of takeable legal size here. Um, but I know they are here. I know lads that have. Um, but you get all kinds here, pipe fish, um, yeah you get pipe fish, uh, I was actually, a, my daughter caught a lump sucker, a Cornish lump sucker I think it was, um, and it was, a little bucket with me, um, actually John Locker from Fish locker that told me it was a Cornish lump sucker. Um, never seen one before, but I know there are. I know they are here because I know two other people that found them last year, last spring. Um, and they've fallen everywhere. They're hard to find because they literally cling to the rocks like a cling fish, whether or not it's the same thing. Um, I'll put a picture in later if I can find it. I think I've actually got a, a YouTube short on my channel. Of, uh, of it. Big shrimp under that one. I'm not going to waste my time with that. Um, yeah, pipe fish. Now obviously, all your gobies, your blennies, you find little, little wrasse. Um, but whilst you're doing this as well, you'll find bait, peelers. Um, couple of very small brown edibles very small 
the size of them. They've got a way to go before they're on someone's plate, haven't they? see me on there. Try and turn you around as I'm as I'm going. So far nothing brilliant but it's always the excitement of what you you could potentially find. Ooh. with a rod and line in a bit. Uh, the tide's still going out at the minute so that is a miniature velvet swimming crab. Slightly bigger goby, still not massive. There we go, the sun's in the way. There he is. I'll pop him back in that pool there. I'm sure he'll make his way to wherever I got him from. <sighs> Empty bucket so far. I have got a peeler in there. I don't know if it's big enough to, to bother keeping. I might throw that back. And these look like decent little rocks here. So, as you can see, the rocks that I'm on about, they're not in the full rock pools like that. They've just got a little bit of water surrounding them so that whatever bolts out, you're not losing in a huge pool. It's not too bad when you've got a little net, you put the net behind the rock in anticipation for whatever's in there. Slightly bigger edible crab. Still nowhere near. Put you back, mate. Move you out, put the rock back, find your way back in. Uh, there's a, a rockling here that doesn't realise it's been caught yet. Oh, you just woke up. This is just a shore rockling. certain that's a shore rockling. Cool little thing though. If I was cruel that'd be a perfect live bait. <laughs> See if I can get a picture of him swimming off. Oh. Straight off he goes. I don't think you'll have seen that. The footage isn't going to be brilliant from this because I kind of just oh, like that kind of just chucking the uh, the camera down anywhere I can. Let's get that back. This looks like a promising rock. Shore crab. Ah, 
absolutely tons of brown edibles here. Tons of them. Oh, we've got an eel. We've got a little silver eel. Off. Where have you gone? It's only tiny. I'm not going to bother wasting too much energy on it. You know what an eel looks like. Bring you back when I find some more productive, uh, productive rocks. So just quickly, I'm going to interrupt the main video, uh, just show you a few clips of uh, what I got yesterday when I was out and about. Um, this is the butterfish I caught. Really cool little things. Um, my camera, I do need to get a better camera. It doesn't do do these little things any justice. But yeah, they move like a snake. They've got quite predominant spots on them, um, and I've I've found them in different colours, ranging from brown to almost bright yellowy orange. Uh, not much bigger than this, probably 10 centimetres. Uh, I'm not sure if they do get any bigger. Um, these I found. I've been finding a lot more of these these last two or three years. Um, I originally thought they were a mitten crab. If anyone knows what they are. I know the footage isn't brilliant, uh, do let me know, they're, uh, they're certainly not a shore crab and the solid little things, incredibly strong. Um, I'm guessing they're an invasive species of some sort, yeah, if you know what they are, let me know. Yeah, I found, I found a pair of them yesterday, found a few, um, they're like an, almost like a star shape shell to it, weird things there. Yeah. Finally, little uh, porcelain crabs. Seen a lot, a lot of these at the minute. Um, small things, I don't think they get much bigger than this. But they're, uh, they're incredibly strong for the size. You put one of them on your finger, they wrap around it, they cling to it. They're, uh, they're brilliant little things. Massive claws on them for the size of them. And they can give a little punch as well. Always lift the seaweed up as well. That's where you tend to find the pike fish clinging underneath them. I've not, I've not caught a pike fish yet this year. Usually a load of them about. But saying that, I've not done much of this type of foraging.
like a little peeler, but it's too small. Far too small. Guys, shit. Um, fucking hell, I found another one. Wait there. Oh, let me turn this round. Oh, right, guys, I'm out of breath. So I've just lifted this rock up. You can see these anemones on here. As I was putting it down, then something just caught my eye, and it is exactly what I've just been talking about. The first one I've ever caught. I'll try and get a better view. It's a Cornish lump sucker. And like I was saying, the last time Lola caught one, by absolute fluke, these rocks are quite... I'm just gonna put this down two secs. That's better, I will put the rock back in a minute. There he is. There he is. How cool is he? I so nearly missed that then. Because at a glimpse, like I said they don't move, they just look like these anemones that are on the rocks there. Oh, that's the exact spot, well, near enough, within 10 feet, 5 feet of where Lola caught hers last year. And I can finally say I've caught one as well. Oh, I'm buzzing. Wow. You might call me a geek, you might call me sad, but this is why I absolutely love doing this rock pooling. That fascinates me, that. His mouth, the way it opens, the blue on his back. <sighs> Get to do it. get this rock turned back over. So true to the name, <laughs> these suckers, these lump suckers, I can't get him off me. I've been putting him in a bucket of water, submerging him just to see if he'll release. Um, but he don't want to go. He's so cool. This is why I come out and I do this and I go through the rock pools and, you know, to some, they don't get it. You know, I've not caught him on a rod and line, I'm not bothered. I probably wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to hurt a fish like this. He is absolutely, I just wish I had a better camera because the pit, the, the spots, like the leopard spots down him and the, the electric blue spots on his head, he's just incredible. And his beak, it's like a beak. Come on, I want to put you back now, mate. You need to get off me, I've got stuff to do. The, t the tide's coming in and I've got stuff to go and catch. Let's see if I can get him open in his mouth. He is hard on there as well. There is no, uh, there's no lift in him. It's like a pad he's got on his, on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Come on, pal. He's like, nah, this is karma. He said, you've disturbed me. You've messed my morning up. So now, mate, I'm going to mess yours up. Come on. Nope. Go on, cling to that rock. Oh, there we go. Look, got him to got him to cling to a a rock there, and I can put him back that way then. You saw him opening his mouth then. Can live out of water these but i have kept him in a bucket um what an amazing little creature all right i'm gonna get him back uh which rock does he here we go oh 
I am absolutely buzzing. And I'm going to make a mental note of where I found that. The exact rock. And I'm going to come back. Um, I don't know if they're possible to catch them with rod and line. Uh, they've got quite big mouths on them. Um, but like I said, I don't know if I'd want to. He's too cute to, to put a hook in. <sighs> anyway, I'll keep looking. I've got probably another 20 minutes, half an hour, before I'm going to go and get the LRF gear out and try and catch some of these minis uh, with a hook. How utterly cool is that? You can see his markings even better now. Now he's in the water. Wow. Look at him. And he's off under the rock. You can see why I thought it was an, an enemy with these here. Get this rock back. Uh, same time next year, mate. <laughs> oh, you probably think I'm so sad getting excited over that. I don't know if this makes sense, but always try and pull the rock back so it's facing away from the water. So anything that's potentially in it, I'll move away from the open rock pool. Nothing under there. A couple of crabs. I thought there'd be, uh, there'd be something more under there. Always put the rocks back as best you can. Um, just means the next time you come down, you've got places to look. Uh, it's a nice morning workout anyway. Sand fleas. I'm doing this one handed, so anything that's under these, it'll get away anyway, just to show you. So, this is a freshwater outlet by the looks of it. Let's taste it. Yeah, fresh water. But this is where, believe it or not, I tend to find a lot of the stuff. So they obviously don't need to be in salt water, see? Crabs and stuff in there, they're living in the fresh water. Sorry for the heavy, heavy breathing guys. Oh, there's a little fish under there, I don't know if you can see him. Pop that rock up. If you can spot him, just shot under the seaweed there. There he is. Tiny little gobby. That is off. Like I said, that's. Pretty much 100% fresh water, that. I've caught some big silver eels doing this. 
they're not big, but you know. Don't know if I've already lifted that one. Here's a goby. Come on, Benny. Off he goes. Awesome, get that rock back. Right, fans up there. I get back, have a brew. That's the van, have a brew. I make a plan. Um, I've done a bit longer down here than I was planning to. And the tide's coming in quite quick because we're still on quite a big set of tides at the minute. So, whether or not I managed to get into the rock pool with, with a rod and line, I'm not sure. Um, Hmm, we'll see. I am buzzing with that. Um, like I say, it might not be the incredible find um, in most parts of the country, but round here they are rare. Them they're not. Uh, I've been rock pooling and foraging ever since I was. Oh, I could walk. I found some pretty cool things, uh, and I've never had one of them. And I know some of the lads that have lived on this island all their lives as well. They've never had one. Um, it might not be necessarily because they're that rare. They're just probably hard to find because like I said, I'd have missed that if I hadn't had just so it had just caught my eye. Um, so the, I probably walked past loads of them. Um, but yeah, I, know, I can't believe I'm still blabbing on about a fish I found in a rock pool. Um, I know I'm sad, uh, but I love it. And yeah, there's something about just move, it just brings out the kid in you. Just go into a rock pool with a bucket. Um, I've started not to take a net with me just because I think it makes it more fun um, and a bit more skill to it. You need to use a bit more watercraft. Um, yeah, well, there's not loads of skill to it, but I do think you need to know where to look. Um, only 100 yards down the same bit of coastline. Uh, you could go there all day, lift every rock up, um, turn every bit of seaweed, and you'll get hardly anything. Most of the stuff I find seems to be condensed in the same two or three little spots that I go to, um, and they're all polyhead side. Um, there's some incredible rock pools, even better than these, over the other end of the island, um, which I've not been to for a couple of years. Now they are, they are insane. Um, maybe I'll be able to get over there this year and show you. Uh, but yeah, I'm just driving back home for a bit. I'm gonna have a brew, get something to eat. I was on a 12 hour night shift last night and I've not been home yet. So I left, left work at six. I went straight to uh, straight to the rock pools. Um, so I'm gonna go home for a bit, get my stuff together and make a plan as to where we're going to next. Um, We've had, we've had a big storm hit the island these last few days. Had serious, serious uh, gusts and the sea's been absolutely wild. Massive tides. Um, but the massive tides meant that I could get out and do a bit of razor, razor clam foraging, which I've never done before. Um, a good mate from the boating community, um, he asked me if I wanted to go along and do a bit. 
and I thought, yeah, why not? Something new. I ended up getting about 40 in the same amount of minutes, I think, which was absolutely mint. Um, I have put a little clip on already, but I'll, I'll get another little clip now. Um, stick that in, or a couple of pictures. Um, but yeah, I was buzzing with that. So the big tides had the uses, but been pretty much unfishable, certainly this side of the island. Um, it's calmed down now, we're at about 20, 25 kilometers an hour. Um, southwesterly, I want to say. I'm not sure. I'm not too good with wind directions. But anyway, I'm sure I'll find somewhere to go later on. Um, and when I do, you'll know about it. Well, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I'm going home happy, boys. Seven o'clock in the morning, I'm buzzing. Catching a tiny little fish like that. I'd rather catch that than a, a six pound bass. Well, then I won't mind a six pound bass this afternoon, so. Yeah, spot on. Right, I'll see you in a bit.